Okay, what's going on boys? No guys here, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to get more wins in a weekend league. Now that we're going to go with tactics, where you should be shooting, how you should be shooting, skill moves, frustration, external, internal, and all that. Um, the first thing above everything is, number one, is tactic setup, because I think it is the most important thing, realistically speaking. Um, above everything, tactics is the most important, because if you don't have tactics set up, you're in big, big trouble. Now, I'm not saying tactics like as in, um, a certain custom, I mean one that suits your playstyle. So what I'm trying to say is you have a formation for when you're want to close the game out when you're basically your mid formation and one that you use most of the game and maybe a different variation, maybe like a 4 one 2 one 2 a 4 4 2 and then an all out attack formation. This is so important, but it's neglected so much because most of you guys that watch this video are using one formation the entire game. If you're using one formation, have a defensive variation of it and have an attacking variation of it. The key thing is if you are, let's say, winning 2-0, People think, oh, momentum's going against you. Do you think your opponent's going to be sitting back when they're 2-0 down? Of course not. They're going to go attacking. So the idea is you want to change to a more defensive formation. That way, when he commits more players forward, you commit more players backward. That way, you create a balance of play. That's the issue. Um, so make sure you have a different system, different setup. I have one ultra attacking formation, one where I need to press the ball. I have one defensive formation where most people are on stay back while attacking. Um, I've got a formation video coming out on Saturday, so but I'll just pause it now and you can feel free to copy these tactics. And um, I got one formation which is a more of a wider one. So I use my um 5-3-2 as a wider formation, and then my 3-5-2 is a more narrow formation. So if my opponent is playing overload the ball side, I got the 5-3-2 as a wider option. So I always change between them. So make sure you have this set up. Make sure at least you have some attempt, I would say, at least setting some moderate tactics up. So that's that thing. Um, next, so gameplay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a couple of examples on the screen for you right now. Um, the first thing is five-star weak foot. Um, I don't care what anyone has told you. You need a five-star weak foot and striker. You just need it. It's so Because even if the guy's got a good weak foot, let's say someone like Ronaldo, right? Ronaldo's got, like you can argue, his weak foot is like a five-star weak foot. The problem is, is that even someone like him, if someone's defending against him, they always commit on a certain side. When someone's got a five-star weak foot, let's say defending against Neymar, they don't know which way he's going to go, so they have to keep their distance. That in turn gives you more space inside the box. Even if it doesn't help you, it'll help you, I would say, in an indirect way. In your benefit, you can shoot on either foot. I'm still surprised that no one's no one wants to use Neymar on striker. I still see players using Mbappe in striker. I see the likes of Rashford. Okay, yes, fine, in January, I understand that. But come on, it's team of the season now. Um, so it's very, very important. I'll be honest, most of my shots go near post. I would say, I was looking at some some like some like gameplay. I think I would say 70 to 80% of my goals are all near post. Like you can see on the screen, just shoot near post, honestly. It's the best thing I can advise for you. Um, most of my goals that I score are basically near post now. And that's the best advice I can give you on that. And the next one is frustration. Take a break. Now, I know what people are going to say to me is, man, I get 15 and 15. You think I've got to take an hour break every time I lose? No, that's fine. I understand that. But just take a two-minute break. You know, there's so much research behind just, you know, science, scientific research, actual research behind just taking a break. You know, going downstairs, making a cup of tea, drinking a glass of water, anything, just to calm your frustration. Because what happens is, what people don't understand is, when you're playing weekend league, you might be playing bad, but you don't realize. What I mean by that is, you could be going three and four, four and one. Let's say you're normally a four and four player. You could be facing not the best players. Then once you go to round 13, you think you're playing good, but you're not. Then when you start losing three or four games in a row, it's not because the game screwed you over, it's because you're getting frustrated. And what's happening is that, a lot of people don't realize this, is that a lot of the time when you're in the game, you might be facing versus easy opponents and you're making mistakes, but you do not realize you're making mistakes. It's only when you face someone the same level as you, then you're like, okay, now I'm losing, but they don't understand why. They just think somehow the game has changed. Somehow the EA gods have come out and said, you sir are gonna get less wins. I've heard every under excuse under the, uh, under the sun, but I'm just telling you, just take a break. If you lose a game, take a one minute break. My best advice is look back at your gameplay because everyone says, oh, I did nothing wrong. Even myself on stream, I'll be like, I did nothing wrong. Um, sometimes I make mistakes, obviously, because I'm streaming and I read the chat. That's fine. But if I say I've, I've, made, I've made a mistake, I normally look back at my gameplay. And most of the time, I made a mistake. If I didn't, it's something before that. Yes, the delay and lag, but every single person is in the same boat. It's not just you. I'm sure you've won games where you shouldn't have won when your opponent had lag as well. So it works on both ends and in both favors. Um, the next one I'm going to say with that is splitting up your games. Okay, this, this is my best system. Friday morning and afternoon, unless you're like, if you're like a gold three player, it's fine to play. But if you're like gold one elite level, I would say avoid Friday. 
Um, especially in the morning, that's when all the pros are playing because they want to get the highest skill rating for top 100. Basically, if you play your uh, games early, you get a higher skill rating. So that's why you have a higher chance of facing pros in the morning and the afternoon, um, I would say on a Friday. I would say split your games up though. Five in the morning, five in the evening, um, if you want to. Saturday, five in the morning, five in the evening. And Sunday, five in the morning, five in the evening. That way, you got a good balance. That way, if you lose a game, you just take a break and you go away. The problem is, don't leave your games. Don't be like, yeah, you know what? I'm watching this Netflix show. You know what? I, I can't play 10 games on Sunday. Everyone talks about these easy games. You lose one game from there, that's it. You're going to get frustrated and you're going to be back to square one. So my best advice is split your games up. Stick. If you sit, don't say, oh, I lost one game. Let me just play one more. Stick to your system. If you realize you're not doing the best, you've got to be lucky. Just take your break and I'll say split the games up. That's the best thing you can do. You might see these pro players play 30 games in a row, but they're pro players for a reason. They know every single mechanic abusing method. They know how to score every single goal. They've got the best tier players and they play this game for a living. Most of you guys are casual players. You come back home from work or school, you want to play your games and that's about it. Get your rewards, end of story. You're not going to become some pro player, so do bear that in mind. Then also I want to talk about is players now, please. I said this in this exact same video I made in FIFA 20 last year. I said everyone changed their fullbacks. You didn't listen to me now. You have to listen to me. Listen to me, Dan. You have to listen now. Please change the fullbacks. You cannot use someone who's got 85 sprint speed. I'm sorry. You just cannot. Now, it's fine and dandy if you're versing Rashford. Even then, you're struggling. But once you've got these team of the year players, which are very easy to get, you can get, like, think about it, I got Moise Keen. You get like Moise Keen, right? For like 50k. You sub this guy on with an engine. He's almost got 99 sprint speed. Do you think a centre back with 85 sprint speed is going to stand a chance? So just change to a fullback. It's fine if you're going to like civil one, goal three, but if you want to go to the high rank, you have to change. Now, can you play with the centre backs with like I don't know 80 pace if you use drop back one depth? But what's the point? People want to have fun. I mean, for me, in the end of the day, it's all about having fun. I'm lucky because on my ability, I can still win. But if I'm not having fun, I don't want to play the game, even though I'm a content creator. So understand that. Next thing is super subs. As I said. Moist Keen, um, there's so many super subs you can get that are so cheap. Um, I'm going to show you an example, right? So if you go over to the transfer market, um, you can get Moist Keen. Um, look, just, just if you go to um, quality search by team of the season, you can do this on Footbin if you want to, but just to make things a bit more easy, I'm just going to do it here. Um, just search for your budget. It's, if you've got a budget of 60K, let's just say your budget is, I don't know, let's just say for a good, good let's just say 60K is your budget. There's so many cards you can get for 60K. Now, am I saying go buy a center back? No. Probably a bit, let's go about 75k. So let's say we go for attacker. Just go here, set position, and you can sort it by what position. I normally just do it like this by this forward. For 70k, you can buy someone like Edward. I think that's how you say his name. Four star, four star, high, medium, good agility and balance, good shooting. It's an absolute steal. So I'm not saying to play him in striker, but play him on a wing. Sub these guys on. They're going to make the biggest change. And especially, I would say, against team, if you've got a weak team, if you're like me and you haven't got the best of teams um, compared to the rest, um, you're going, you need to have these subs. Like, for example, Rashford got the job done before, but now he's not good enough. So this time I'm going to be subbing on Moise Keane and be subbing on Zielinski because these cards are not good enough. So understand that as well. Super subs are very important, especially if you've got a gold team towards 70 minutes, 80 minutes. You've got to start making guaranteed subs because your opponent's going to be doing the same thing. And you don't want to have someone who's got no energy in midfield and you've got some guy with 85 sprints be running right through. I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, and one of the final things I wanted to say is skill moves. Um, for me, the meta, which it will eventually become the meta. This is like the 5-3-2 became the meta, like the 4 backs became meta. First time fake shots. It's the only skill move you actually need, but I'm shocked how no one even uses it. Skill moves are important, but don't overuse them. You're meant to use them inside the box to be unpredictable, but don't do them in a halfway line. Um, I would say just master three skill moves. In my opinion, I got a video coming up on this during a week, but in my opinion, agile dribbling, fake shot, and I don't condone it. I don't I don't use it either, but um direction nutmeg. If you can use all those three, then you're completely fine. Direction nutmeg, if you haven't started using it, don't even bother using it now. It's no point in my opinion. Um, but agile dribbling, um, fake shot, and heel to heel is a good skill move. And even for example, um a lack of keta. Three good skill moves. Um, or four, you can argue, they can really get you through in a final third. And the last thing I want to say is, is it really worth it? If you're on a gold one player now, this is going to sound really, really contradictory, but um, you have to understand this. I mean, it's from the, the truth, right? If you're a gold one player, the chance you're getting elite is astronomically low. 
because ev the weekend league is going to be harder. Everyone is sweating for the games, okay? So it's going to be much harder. So you have to think, is it worth it? Now, in my opinion, it's got to be, for me, it's either Gold 3 or Elite 3. That's it. So unless you're like Elite 1 or Top 100 player, you're probably not watching this video anyway. But those guys, I know Top 100 players will struggle to get Elite 1 this week. I know Elite 1 players have got 24, 23 wins this week. So I understand it just depends. In my opinion, there's three benchmarks. Gold 3 is a really good benchmark. Surprising rewards are really good. Gold 2, you get the guaranteed, but I've seen people get gold 2. They don't even get guaranteed anything. They just get garbage. Um, the, I got like, get like Zielinski, which is worth nothing. And then you have um, the Elite level. Elite is only worth it because the price of the cards are a lot. Now, this is the thing. You think, oh yeah, someone get rich. You pack Valverde, you pack a few other cards. You get there, you got 2 million from Elite 3. Just like that, easy. But giant people that, on, that are not posting rewards are getting, for example, like 200k. Can you imagine sweating through the entire weekend league just to make 200k? And I've seen people in gold 3 get better red picks than some in the elite 3. So you've got to think about it. Is it worth it? If you're an elite 3 player now, it's understandable. But if you're a gold 1 player, pushing that to that elite 3, you might get it. But I'm saying don't stress if you don't get it because everyone's going to be tryharding. Every single game is going to be a World Cup final. There's no more casual games, no more first 10 games. And that's just the way it is. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. A um, bit of um, information, I suppose you can say, on how to get more wins in a weekend league. Um, as I said, the most important thing I would say is, you know, taking a break. I think frustration is the biggest cost um, to most people in a weekend league. I think that's what people fail most of weekends because they don't take a break. And if you don't take a break, even myself, I'm um, obviously when I'm streaming, I can't take a break. Um, but also, health comes first. You know, I got a wrist injury. I'm not going to overdo it um and if and, and let's say for example if the fun stops i'm not even joking just stop it's not worth it uh, Premier League team of the season i understand people want to play on but after this week who cares maybe you wait to ultimate team season but at that point the game's over so it's kind of up to you but that's kind of my two cents but anyway i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching take it easy and i'll catch you next time peace out